I want to set a scene, first of all, about why days like this are really, really important. Um, at the moment, becoming, in England especially, extremely unequal society. And it is there for all to see. Uh, these are 10 years of austerity shown on the London skyline, uh, showing extraordinary examples of uh, excessive uh, individual greed that is creating uh, our cities. 10 years of austerity. Uh, in this, um, uh, the people who are creating our places at the moment, who are owning them and controlling them, are a very small minority. And that minority is getting smaller by the minute. So for the rest of us, the story is very different. We are experiencing increasing uh, amount of poverty and deprivation. Uh, again, this is for all to see in any city you, you, you care to go to, this is Leeds. Uh, we also have global problems, as we know. Uh, we are using so many fossil fuels and eating so much meat and uh, uh, creating so much carbon dioxide that our climate is changing very rapidly. And again, it's for all of us to see the fires, the floods, the mudslides, the melting I uh, icebergs, the rising sea levels. We can see it now. We cannot uh, deny that this is happening. Uh, also, populations on the move. Uh, there is um, a prediction that by 2030, there'll be 250 million people who are simply environmental refugees. That's without thinking about the uh, refugees, uh, economic and war refugees. And new places are springing up everywhere. It's places which are supposed to be temporary, but they become completely permanent. And then, of course, there's also the issue of waste. We are wasting so much, we're using too many resources and we are dumping it anywhere we like. Some of it waste is no longer uh, degradable. The plastics, we've become very aware last year about the plastic pollution. Uh, and again, uh, we, it is all there to see. We cannot close our eyes to it. So the problem is that those who are governing us, those who have power, we have given them the power in democracies to rule on our behalf and make the kind of policies that will change uh, those problems. They are too self-interested. Look at what's happening in our government at the moment. They are serving themselves and their own interests. We cannot look to people who are comfortable to change the lives of those who are uncomfortable. Not at the moment, anyway. And if we allow this to continue, if nobody intervenes, we will, we will end up, we already have places like this, in kind of dystopia that has been uh, shown in many books now and in many films, this is Hunger Games, the gated community, you know, the city, the capital, which has everything to excess, it's disgusting. There's too much of everything, it's debauched. And outside the gated community, there's everybody else. There are the districts uh, that are completely deprived and impoverished and with, no, with no hope. So we need to resolve this. And the issue that we are all facing is that we are in the moment of interregnum. It's Anthony Gramsci in 1971 who defined this uh, idea of interregnum, which is um, a state where all the structures that we had, all the familiar structures that we used to resolve problems like this are no longer functioning, they are breaking down. Uh, the financial crisis of 2008 was a fantastic example of this. But we don't yet have structures that will allow us to tackle global problems. All the governance is uh, uh, on a sovereignty level, on, on a national level. We have global problems and we don't have global court of law. We don't have global government. So we are in a period of interregnum. And just the other thing to say is that there are four generations, all of them present here, 100 years where, within which we have understood that we created a problem, understood the level of a problem, and understood that we only have very short time to solve it. We all know that um, if we get to 1.5% degrees uh, of warming, it will be difficult for us to control it. We will not have enough capacity or resources to actually control the changes that nature will impose on us. So this is the generation that has to have ideas about how to, how to change it. And we are, we are stepping up to it. And today is all about that. Uh, hundreds and thousands of people are experimenting and prototyping new ideas about how to tackle those enormous problems. And we have 
uh, extraordinary technology to assist us. I know some of us think technology is a bad thing, but it's up to us. No, you can use a knife to chop a beautiful uh, dinner, or you can use it to kill a man. So it's up to us completely how we use those technologies. But the reality is that we have got technologies that could alter the way we govern, govern ourselves and allow more collaborative commons to emerge, for us to be more connected in a, in, in a single uh, collective effort. We've heard about it already from previous speaker. So we as architects have jumped on this possibility of new technologies to see how can this be part of the solution. And there are now many construction systems just emerging, which are completely digital. That means they are designed on a computer, the file, computer design files are then turned into fabrication uh, files and then goes into a machine which is also digital and which can cut the system. And there are many people at the same time as these systems are emerging, there's also another movement, a, a massive trend, uh, community-led housing. A lot of people wanting to build for themselves, wanting to create places where they can live in a different way, in a more sustainable way. way. And we are trying to bring those two trends together, the social trend of people who want to build and the digital trend of systems that, that is easy to build with. And we have developed over the last five years with loads of uh, research grants from, uh, from uh, Innovate UK, one of our systems called Mass Bespoke. Uh, it's mass because it's made up of, of cassettes which can be filled with all sorts of different things. Could be sand if you're in a desert, it could be a sheep wool if you are in Wales. Uh, it can perform in different ways. Uh, the, the houses are made out of those cassettes and they can be fabricated anywhere in the world at the same time in very small workshops. So this is the mass part of it. It can be mass produced. It's also bespoke because it's a parametric design. It means it's designed as a system, not as an object. So everything is connected. So if we change a design, if you tweak a design of a house on a screen, make it a bit wider, a bit taller, all the cassettes adjust automatically and all the structure adjusts automatically. So we can actually vary the design because all about you know, placemaking is very much about people also being able to do the things that they want individually to do as well as do them collectively. So there is possibility of uh, bespoke design with the system. But the most important part about this system is that it's distributed. At the moment, you can only get uh, houses uh, built in those kind of high environmental um, uh, uh, performances in very, very large factories, which belong to very, very wealthy people again, and they are beginning to, to benefit from all the housing crisis. The, these systems, these digital systems, can be fabricated in tiny factories, which can simply spring around in different communities. Uh, the flying factory, which we designed, which we called Building Common, comes in two containers. All the equipment uh, that you need to, to, to cut the cassettes and to assemble them are in those containers. Uh, it costs 100,000 pounds to create one of those flying factories. They can be shared by a number of communities or they can be owned by, by a community that wants to build a lot of houses for somebody else or other buildings. So these flying factories can be distributed all over the world. And when they plant it uh, in, in a community, when a community gets hold of one of these, they then create an incredible eco ecological footprint because it means that we can have local uh, supply chain, you know, all the materials, all the trades can come uh, locally. There are training opportunities. We can, especially popular with uh, young people who are not quite sure how to engage uh, w w with construction, but also older generation who possibly retired, got the construction skills or would like to contribute to collective building. Uh, there's also a possibility of just getting involved in building your own place. So we are now working in about five neighborhoods. We developed a method to map the local neighborhood to see what's there already. The flying factory should only be uh, 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 procured when you actually know what you already got. Uh, and in every community that we are working on at the moment, we find people with skills, we, got, we find sites and, and demand and, uh, um, and uh, supply chain that are incredibly in keen to come in, also educational authorities. So there's no shortage in most communities of interest and ability to, to, to implement one of those, uh, those ideas. So our proposition is that if we could start building in this way, if we can own our own um, means of production, if communities were in charge of construction process, we don't have to rethink our cities. We don't have to completely lose the, 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 the sense of who we are and how we live. But we, could, we can shift from being a, a growth 
uh, focused economy into a collaborative economy, economy where we are more engaged and happier and healthier and we will live much more sustainably. And in case you are thinking, oh, how can a small idea like this tackle this enormous problem? Well, I would say, let me just go back first. This is a graph of how innovation happens. Uh, initially, oh, it will not let me say that. Initially, you have very small number of innovators. I don't think, this is ridiculous, I'm going to keep my button. Um, no, no, okay, I, I, I really, really need to show you the slide, because initially, uh, there are very, very small number of innovators uh, and very, very few people are real innovators. Now, it's very difficult to think of something which is completely new. Uh, but if the idea is good, other people come on board um, and, and, and I call early adapters. And I, I am one of those early adapters. So our whole firm is early adapters. So we pick up ideas, you know, the new technologies, the social needs, and we start building on it. And then, one of those, some of those uh, prototypes and demonstrations exist, then everybody else starts coming on board, and that's very quick. And I think that at the moment, this year, 2019, I think is that kind of year, where a lot of things that we've all been working towards collectively are suddenly go going to come together and create incredible transformational change. So I do believe that we are all vested with um, agency. We're, we're individually and in small groups, we can really, really can make a change and really the question for me to you is what would you like to change tomorrow thank you very much